Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. It is me Desiree and it is time to share all the makeup that I used up this year. It's nothing groundbreaking, like I don't have a million products because I have a lot of stuff and I like shopping my stash, rotating through, buying new stuff, you know, so it's very rare that I focus on one thing until I use it up. But I do have like a nice little handful of stuff I wanted to share with you. And when I was telling my boyfriend I was gonna come film this video, um, I said, oh yeah, it's kind of like a joke though, because it's not like tons and tons of stuff, like I'm not like powering through my makeup collection. Um, but there were two products that were so close, they were so close to being used up, but not enough, I couldn't throw them in the video because they're not empty yet. One of them was this pressed powder from Too Faced. It's so close, I just have like a ring around the edge there. Um, this is gonna have to be a next year's video though. And then I have uh, a brow powder, that I think I might use up this year, or in 2023. So those are two like, so close. But the rest of this stuff is uh, stuff that I did use up. So the first one here is the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is just a little mini. I'm sure this was a point perk or a free gift of purchase or something. Uh, this is actually a really good setting spray, but I feel like the L'Oreal one is so, so similar to this. Uh, really, really good, like really does work, helps with the longevity of your makeup. And I have found that when I use this as like a primer water, like spray it on your face before makeup, then do your makeup, then spray this on top again, it kind of like sandwiches everything together and I feel like it makes a really big difference. Do they have like an all-nighter primer, like an actual primer? Because I really like using this for that, it's really good. I've actually never bought this in a full size, I just seem to always have a little mini for some reason. Really good, nice little travel size. I would buy this in a full size, but I don't need it. You know, I have a lot of sprays I like to try out and I don't really need to buy that one. The next spray I used up is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip uh, Set and Refresh Spray. Uh, this was a little duo face, so it had a, uh, like a liquid down here and then an oil on top, so make sure and shake it up before you use it. I loved the clear packaging so much. I loved this sprayer most of the time. I found that when it got like kind of close to being empty, for some reason this just started acting differently. It was like spitting and big old drops were coming out, but for the most part the mist was so nice, like I wanted to keep this and refill it, uh, but it just kind of gave out like before I even finished it up. Uh, that being said though, the actual spray, like the liquid, was so good. I really, really liked this. Again, another one that really seemed like it helped with the longevity, but it also made your face look a little bit dewy because of that oil. Not like wet or greasy, but just if you put on too much powder that day or you were looking a little flat, like maybe you put on too many matte products and you need to like add a little glow to your skin, this was really, really good for that. Uh, I would buy this again because I really liked the liquid a lot, like the actual spray. Just the sprayer wasn't the best, so I would buy this again poured into another bottle, but it was really nice. I would buy that again. <clears throat> and then I used up this one from Tarte, the Stay Spray Setting Spray. I don't remember this. Uh, I must have used it up like in the beginning of the year. Oh, it has a hairspray smell. I remember that smell. Kind of smells like uh, Salon Selectives, Vidal Sassoon, you know those kind of shampoo scents. I don't remember this at all. I'm sure it was fine. It was a teeny tiny little mini. Um, forgettable, obviously. Okay, I have four mascaras. Three of them are from Tarte. I don't know, Tarte just stole my heart this year with mascara. Uh, but the first one here is from Kelly Ray. This is called Come Hell or High Water. And this is a tubing mascara. And this was unlike any tubing mascara I had ever tried because it didn't perform like one or remove like one. It, I, I don't know, I just didn't feel like this was a tubing mascara, it was, that's just me. Uh, but it did work really, really well. I do have a video on this where I demo it, I show you like my lashes side by side. Uh, this is what the brush looks like. It looks just like a traditional, like natural bristle brush, nothing too crazy, they're not trying to re reinvent the mascara wand here, you know? And I like wands like this. I really love wands that are just kind of thin, a little bit of a taper. Um, this really just performed like a waterproof mascara. It was great on the lower lashes, great on the top lashes, but it did take a little bit of effort to remove it. It really removed like it was waterproof. And normally with tubing mascaras, you can remove them really easily with warm water. So you kind of just put, put some hot warm water in your hands and you press the warm water onto the lashes. 
you'll feel them kind of soften up right away and then you can kind of gently between your fingers you can pull at your lashes and the mascara will fall right off this never removed like that it really truly did feel like waterproof and just nothing about the formula or anything seemed like it was actually tubing mascara but if you want something that works and wears and removes like waterproof this was really good it was really lengthening and i thought it was a good mascara but i wouldn't buy that again just it just kind of annoying to remove um, I used up the Surfer Curl Mascara from Tarte. This is one of my absolute favorite mascaras I have ever used. It's very, very underrated. I love this brush. It has, like I said, a brush I really love. Just really thin, a tiny little bit of taper there. It looks like natural bristles and there's a bunch of them. The formula is, it's the perfect balance between wet and dry. It's kind of, you know when you have a really wet mascara and after a few weeks it starts feeling really good. There's some air that's kind of drying it out just a tiny bit, just enough for it to feel different on your lashes. That's how this felt every single time. It's really, really good. It doesn't transfer, smear, smudge, or flake. It's a, like, makes your lashes look nice and long and full. I would get people asking me regularly at work what mascara I was wearing, um, and it was always this. It was always this. It's, it's just really good. I feel like I have another one. I have to double check, but I really like this. I would buy that again for sure. And then the other two mascaras I used up were both from Tarte, They're, and both of them are the Tartlet Tubing Mascara. Um, this is a more of like your traditional tubing mascara, unlike the Cali Ray one. This removes really, really easily with water. Uh, one of them is the smaller size, and then the other one is like a sample size. This one came in, I think this was a, a point perk, or I typed in a code and got a free gift um, on Sephora's website. Either way, they're both the same. Um, this mascara blew my mind. Like if I could only pick one mascara, like the mascara of the year, it's this one. So it has, again, that really nice, just thin, slim wand, a little bit of taper on the top. This one has really short bristles and they are plastic or like a, a rubber bristle brush. This mascara is so awesome. I do want to buy this in a full size. Unfortunately, I missed out on the 21 Days of Beauty one. I completely forgot to go pick it up. But this mascara will lengthen, separate, volumize, just make them look full and fat and just, you will look like you have fake lashes on. Like there were times when I would use this that I thought, oh my God, I actually look like I put on fake lashes. It's so, so good, very underrated. I didn't hear anybody talk about this this year. I do wanna do a whole video review on this, but I wanna buy the full size, of course. Uh, this is awesome. It doesn't smudge, smear, flake, transfer on lower lashes as well. Removes really easily with water. One of the best mascaras I've ever, ever used and definitely the best of the year. 100% would repurchase and recommend to anybody. I have a couple of brow things. Two of the NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Mascara. I use the shade Cool Ash Brown. These are awesome. I want to buy another one so badly, but I have a bunch of brow gels I really want to use. So I'm kind of trying to hold off because I know once I repurchase this, I'm not gonna use anything else. I'm gonna wanna start using it right away. Um, it says thickening brow mascara, but it also has fibers in it. So the brush is a little bit off-putting. Like you might see this brush and think, that's not gonna work for me and my thin eyebrows, but trust me, I have tiny, tiny, thin, barely there eyebrows, and this works wonders on them. The formula is so good. It's not too pigmented, but it has color to it. Like pick out a color that you know is gonna work for you because it does have enough tint to it that it will deposit onto your brows. You will see it. The fibers are just right. Like they're not gonna fall all over your face. They're not gonna fill in all crazy. There are some pigmented brow gels that when I go to put them on, it gets all over my skin and it makes me look insane. It picks up every tiny little like the lightest hairs you've ever seen, it'll put color on them and make your brows look just really, really bad. This doesn't do that. It just gets on the hair and not on your skin. Obviously, that's due to the way you're using it as well. Like don't press it super hard onto your skin. 
So this will hold your brows in place all day long without feeling like they're dried onto your head. You know when, like I said, like sometimes you push the brow gel too far down onto your brow, it gets on your skin and you could feel your brows as you move and do expressions throughout the day. This is not gonna do that. It will make your brows look nice and full. It'll make them look like just really, really natural. I love this so much, like for puny little brows, it's awesome. I did a full review on this. I'll link it down below in case you want to see it in action. You can see it on my really thin eyebrows and everything. Uh, two brow pencils I used up. One that I hated. I could not wait to use up this pencil. It's from Anastasia and it's the Brow Wiz. I had the shade medium brown. For one, I lost the cap. The other side, the spoolie, where the spoolie is supposed to be, it broke. Like just, I was just using it and it just kept bending and breaking and then finally the plastic cracked off so there was no spoolie there. The color was fine but the pencil was so dry and I know what you're thinking, it's because I lost the cap. And I lost the cap probably halfway through its lifetime and I didn't like it even before I lost the cap on it. The pencil just, it just, it's too dry, it doesn't deposit color that well, I don't really like it, I don't get the hype. Um, there's so many brow pencils out there now like you know, these kind of pencils are a dime a dozen, and this one was not my favorite by a country mile. One pencil though that I love so much and I have repurchased several times is the Morphe Eyebrow Pencil. This is their Micro Brow Pencil, and I have the shade Chocolate Mousse. Another super skinny brow pencil. You do get a spoolie on one side, and then your brow pencil here. Another one, I'm trying to click it like there's something to show you. Uh, a really skinny brow pencil. I love the color. It's pigmented enough, it's creamy enough, it's dry enough, like it's perfect. Where it's dry and creamy at the same time, so it's not like, you know with those pencils when you kind of just barely touch them and it feels like it's melted and it's just kind of like, it's, it's like a gel eyeliner almost. This isn't like that, it's just like the perfect formula. Love the color on me, love the price. I think it's $7, really good. And it's an awesome pencil, I repurchase it regularly. Don't have it now though, because I have a couple I do want to finish up. I did finish up one more brow gel from Anastasia. This is the clear brow gel. And this is something I actually disliked a lot when I first started using it. I didn't like this whatsoever. I found that it didn't hold my brows at all. Uh, the brush is way too big. I just, I just didn't like it. You know, too much gel came out on it. And then I don't know what happened. I put it away. I pulled it out again later on to start using it. And I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed this. I found so, for some reason it started holding my brows in place. Um, I wouldn't go out of my way to buy this at all. Uh, I think it's just, it's a nice brow gel. Um, I hated it, then it was fine, but again, forgettable. I wouldn't buy that again. I used up a little lip thing. This is from Laneige. This is the lip sleeping mask. I did use this as an everyday lip balm, like an all day, everyday balm. This is just a little sample size here. And this is the vanilla one, if I didn't say that. I loved this so much. I have tried some of the Laneige sleeping masks and I, they're fine. Like they're not my number one favorite like lip thing ever, but there's something about this vanilla one. The scent was a vanilla pudding, like just so good. And then I feel like this formula was different than the other ones because this actually felt good on my lips, nourishing, made me want to buy a full size. I really, really liked that would buy that again, but most of the time I don't get the hype on those. They're just kind of good and I always have little sample sizes so I use them, but if I was gonna buy a full size it would be that vanilla one. The last thing I have in here is a foundation. I used up an entire foundation. Yes, I did it. I felt so good about it. Like on the last use of this I was like, wow, I actually used up a foundation. I couldn't believe it. This is the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint and I loved this so much. Uh, I wanted to use it up this year though, like I really focused on it. I used it all the time. Uh, I used it for weeks on end at times because this has oil in it and I found like when I would put it away and bring it out a few weeks later, the oil would just smell funny and it didn't smell good. And then of course the packaging with this is just so uh, whatever, but you you pump it here. Oh, something squirted out. I bet it was just some oil gathered in there. Let me put the lid back on while I demo this. Anyway, you pump it he like here, and then it comes out of the top. Look, there's a little bit in there. Oh my goodness. Okay, some came out. Okay, 
no more is coming out, but a little bit came out. I can show you. Um, and you're supposed to kind of like roll this metal or this ball on your face to kind of roll it on, but it doesn't really, it doesn't roll at all. Actually, it just stays stationary. So as you pump out the product, you would have to just kind of wipe this on your face, which I didn't mind at all. Uh, but the product was so good. It had a really great scent, like lemon. It smelled really similar to the It Cosmetics CC Cream. Um, this is very, very, very moisturizing. Very moisturizing. I think the oily skin people out there would probably not like this. Uh, dry skin would love this. Combo, I think, normal, of course. Oily skin, I don't think this would be for you, unless you kind of like that kind of thing. Uh, not everyone with oily skin is always trying to be super flat and matte, you know? This is awesome. I loved it so, so much. I wouldn't buy it again though. I feel like I got my fill from it and I used it up. I want to focus on other things now. Um, but I love this a lot. I think I thought it was awesome. You know, it had really good coverage. You didn't need to use concealer with it. At least I didn't. I just put this on and I was perfectly happy with the coverage that I had. Wore all day, didn't break apart. Um, just really nice. It was very moisturizing, like I said, so it would you would look like you put on a lot of moisturizer or like a shiny sunscreen. So I always kind of set this with powder. But of course, throughout the day, just because of how moisturizing this is, other products on your skin are going to kind of disappear throughout the day because they're going to get eaten up by this product. So if that sounds good to you, you would like this. I loved it so much. I wore it all the time, all year, and it was great. I know it looks like there's some in here, but there's nothing in there. It's kind of just... I think just, I don't know, residual stuff gathered in this mechanism like that uses to pump it up. But there's nothing in there that comes out when I pump it. And I'm actually surprised any even came out just now. But that's it. Those are all the things I used up. I'm very happy with what I used up. They're products I really love. A couple forgettable things, but most of the time, you know, I'm always trying to use up stuff I really love. So that is it. I know it's not a ton of products, but still, still some good progress, I think. But anyway, that is it. Let me know some products you finished up this year, at least makeup. Uh, stay tuned for my full empties for December. That is coming shortly. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss my next one, and I will see you later in another video.